Even before Russia invaded Ukraine, the Ukrainians had been receiving supplies from various NATO countries, despite not being a NATO member itself. The Russians have far fewer allies, although perhaps its staunchest ally is none other than its neighbour, Belarus. And it's Belarus that I'd like to shine the spotlight on in today's video. What is Belarus's role in the conflict in Ukraine? And will we see it increase and perhaps even become military? Find out more in today's video. When Russia invaded Ukraine, it did so through Belarus as well as its own border with Ukraine using the Belarusian rail service, which is connected to the Russian rail service to position its soldiers, as well as using its terrain from which to fire its artillery into Ukraine. However, whilst Russian troops have crossed the border and attacked Ukrainian positions, Belarusian soldiers have not. So, while Belarus is a country that's being used by Russia for its invasion into Ukraine, Belarus is itself not officially at war with Ukraine. Belarus's leader, the 67-year-old dictator Alexander Lukashenko, had been particularly vocal in support of Putin right up until the invasion started, saying, stop, shoo away these masters from over the ocean, they won't bring you any happiness, as soon as they can't use you anymore, they will dump you at the junkyard of history addressing Ukraine directly. However, for many years, Belarus continued to promise and indeed reiterated its promise that it would not itself attack Ukraine, even in the case of a Russian invasion, although perhaps in somewhat contradictory terms, it promised to support Russia in every way that it could if it would come to a fight with Ukraine. Belarus is particularly important for Russia's invasion of the country because of its location. It allows Russian troops to punch at the heart of Ukraine and to push for the capital of Kyiv, which is just south of the Belarusian border. As mentioned, it also used the rail network to move troops and artillery, and indeed continues to ship out the many wounded soldiers coming back from the battlefield to treat them in Belarusian hospitals. It's possible that Belarus might also up its strategy to further help the Russians given the failure of their campaign in Ukraine so far. For example, on the 27th of February, there was a referendum held which both extended Lukashenko's term in office until at least 2035, as well as allowing the government to host Russian nuclear missiles, which beforehand had not been allowed. However, there is some indication that Belarus will not join in, and in fact Lukashenko has in the past presented himself as a mediator between Ukraine and Russia. For example, following the 2014 Russian annexation of Crimea and the war in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine, the Minsk 1 and 2 agreements between the various sides was held in the capital of Belarus in Minsk, and he was one of the first leaders to propose hosting peace talks between Ukraine and Russia in the first weeks of the conflict, even though these seem to have come to little over humanitarian corridors. Now, in 2020, he faced the biggest challenge to his regime as a result of a rigged election which was declared illegitimate by most countries in the West and which he was only able to put down following the help of Russian police forces and the Kremlin's backing and there are still a great number of dissidents in Belarus today, some of whom have also gone to join Ukraine to fight against Russia, seeing it as an extension of their battle for democracy with inside their own country of Belarus. Now, Belarusians are very largely not in favour of the war in Ukraine, and when polled about whether they think Belarusian soldiers should get involved, only around 11 to 12% of Belarusians thought that Belarus should join this conflict and fight against Ukraine, a fellow Slavic country that is also of great importance in terms of trade for Belarus. This is a very different number to around uh, half to two-thirds of the people in Russia who are in favour of the special military operation, as it's known there, that is occurring in Ukraine. And so one can see that while the war is fairly popular in Russia itself, in Belarus, this is not the case. Now, some have questioned how much Belarus can be seen as an autonomous entity and how much it is now actually a satellite state of Russia, particularly following the 2020 protests against his regime when he had to rely on Russia to keep him in power. 
It seems unlikely now that President Lukashenko has enough clout and power within Belarus and particularly among the army who are handpicked by Russian officials rather than being directly loyal to him as some sources have claimed that he will be able to even ask Russian troops to leave his territory from which they are attacking Ukraine. In 1999, Belarus and Russia signed a treaty which meant they would form a kind of economic union similar to the European Union. However, it's believed that Lukashenko only signed this agreement with the then president Boris Yeltsin because he was hoping that he would replace Yeltsin as the leader of Russia and that he would then unify it together with Belarus. But what ended up happening is that the presidency went to the prime minister, to Vladimir Putin, who has remained in power in one way or another until the present day. And there hasn't been any further progress on an economic union or indeed a political union between Belarus and Russia so far, although it's possible that Belarus now is simply becoming a proxy power of Russia in the long run. Following the 2020 protests and subsequent economic sanctions imposed on Belarus by Western countries, it further drove Belarus into union with Russia, despite not it being an official union. It meant that trade became increasingly centred on Russia for Belarusian markets. And so it's estimated that trade between Belarus and Russia brought in some 29.5 billion US dollars worth of income in 2020. Furthermore, Russia has also provided Belarus with a very significant number of loans in US dollars. So while it may not be the intention of Belarus's population and indeed leader Lukashenko based on his previous behavior and his previous speeches to get involved with sending Belarusian soldiers into Ukraine alongside Russian forces, if push comes to shove, it may be the case that he doesn't have a choice. And recent reshuffles in the Belarusian army, whereby uh, generals who said that they would not go into Ukraine to fight against Ukrainians, have been removed from their posts, and ones more loyal to the pro-Russian narrative have recently been installed. Ukraine has many times said that they feared or were certain that Belarus was imminently joining the conflict, although up until today that hasn't yet happened, although it does remain a possibility that it might in the future. How much this will make a difference on the ground isn't entirely clear, as the Belarusian armed forces number around 62,000 men, significantly smaller than the Ukrainian military and also than the Russian military that has currently invaded it. The state of preparedness of the Belarusian army as well is estimated to be worse than that of Russia, which has up until now performed very poorly. However, an influx of soldiers from Belarus, we're probably thinking around 15, maybe to 20,000 men in several waves, is a possibility and it might help the Russians with their logistical problems further behind the lines with dealing with the Ukrainian territorial defense forces that are targeting their supply routes, as well as possibly striking into western Ukraine towards cities like Lviv. However, it's not clear that the Belarusians would face any better than the Russians themselves and in fact evidence suggests they would probably fare even worse and would probably simply add to the terrible logistical and supply problems faced by the Russian invasion so far. Thank you very much for watching. Just a quick note that half of the proceeds made on my videos this month will be going to helping Ukrainian refugees escape from the conflict and then to find food and shelter and safety once they have escaped from the terrible fighting that is going on. There'll be links in the description if you should wish to donate to this good cause as well. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. What do you think Belarus will do? Do you think Belarus in the future might become involved in this conflict? Or do you think that it is going to remain how it currently is, that Lukashenko isn't looking to get involved in this and might put himself up as a figure with whom both sides can discuss, albeit though he is clearly on the side of Putin and Russia following 2020 and his reliance on the Russians in terms of economic aid and trade and sanctions from the West. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you'd like to see on the current situation in Ukraine and what else is happening around the world and indeed in history. 
give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and if you're new consider subscribing for more content i'll be uploading every wednesday and friday for the foreseeable future in the meantime i have been hilbert and this has been the very recent history <laughs>